2017 was a crazy year for the real estate market. Here's the 2017 end of year recap. Stay tuned. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Props TV. I'm so glad you could join us here. To continue with the yearly tradition, I'm going to be dedicating the next two episodes to breaking down how the market did in 2017. If you want to follow along and pay attention to the spreadsheet I've created, the link to the Dropbox file is in the description below. All stats are from Toronto Real Estate Board from January of 2017 to the end of November 2017. Okay? As we're shooting this in December, the stats for the entire year have not been out yet, so we'll be looking at the stats of the first 11 months, which is usually a pretty good indicator because because December's for holidays. So first thing is first, let's address the elephant in the room. Was this year technically a crash? Well, depending on who you talk to and which sources you use and what timeline you're talking about, the answer is yes and no. I'll show you the stats from my perspective, but let you be the judge of that and interpret it how you want to. Remember, anyone can manipulate any numbers to tell any story. Just keep that in mind, okay? So in this video, we'll be talking strictly about the entire market, including detaches, condos, semis, and towns as a whole market. I'll do a separate video on each of these as the weeks come, so make sure you stay tuned to that. I'm also offering my free How to Profit from the Toronto Condo Market course until the end of the year as a holiday gift to all of you guys and my watchers. That's about a $400 value as a holiday gift for all of you guys. Make sure you get it down below just by clicking on the link in the description, okay? So, where are the prices right now at the end of 2017? Well, by the average metric, we're about a little less than $9,000 than, say, last year, November 2016. By that stat, if you bought anything in November 2016, no need to worry, the value of your property is still good. Bueno. However, based on the way the real estate market is looking, you can see that average prices are trending downwards. Now, there are caveats to this, okay? Toronto proper, meaning the 416, has increased actually $75,000 in price due to the price jump in condos and towns. Now, you can see that in the green box in the chart. What's actually causing the GTA to suffer are the properties in the 905. This is your Markham, Vaughan, Mississauga, and Brampton area. And these are mainly the detaches because you know what? They're not moving and it's causing the red boxes and the downward trend. Now, we all know last year was super hot, this was 2016. We broke 100,000 transactions by the end of November. This year, if we get lucky, we'll be on pace to finish around 90 to 95,000, which, if you really think about it, is not bad because we have 20% less transaction, but for a market that was smacked upside down so far every single year by government interventions and mortgage changes and stress tests, eh, it's really not that bad, my perspective. Another thing I'll point out to you is the absorption rate, or some people like to call it sales to new listing ratio. This is a stat that is indicated by SNLR in the TREB stats, okay? This metric basically indicates the amount of new listings that are being sold or absorbed by the market. If the market is super hot, like we saw last year, we can see the absorption rate of about 72%, like last year, which is ludicrous. Specifically dominated by the 905 detaches last year at 74%. Now, on the contrary, this year, we're seeing around 51% on average, which is closer to a balanced market. The definition of this ratio is the closer you are to zero, the stronger of a buyer's market that is. Now, the closer you are to 100%, the stronger of a seller's market that is. So technically, we're pretty balanced at 51%. However, most people don't really feel that way. And you'll notice that it's around 60% in the 416 proper, which is where Toronto has been in the last 10 years, not counting a super hot 2016. However, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we're looking at the 905, you notice the exact opposite, where 905 is dragging the averages down. It's technically a buyer's market right now in the 905, and again, you can probably bring this back to the detaches that are not moving and are still on the market. Now, let's look at the stats from a bird's eye view throughout the entire year. We don't really need to look at the sales activity like we just talked about. We all know it's gone down in the first few rows. It's gone down a lot because of all the government inventions. Now, these are the numbers in newspaper headlines that are gonna be telling you because it grabs your attention. The major drop off in all of this stuff was during April when the wind government announced the foreign buyer tax. But let's look at the prices because that's what everyone always wants to talk about. What are the prices in Toronto? You can see right here as we hit March, that was our peak and went right after. GT was up 33% okay, at that point, which is absurd, backed by a super strong 905 at 35%. Think about that. In one year, your price has gone up 35%. After that, you can see the prices are coming down. The biggest drop off was basically between April to June with almost 15%. And when you look at the entire year, we've basically reverted back to the prices of 2016 before the super peak. So it went like this 
and like that. So yes, between here and here, there was a crash, but now we're back to normal. And if you look at the entire year, we did experience a crash because prices fell more than 20% from top, and that's the definition of it. Now, the question everyone is asking me is just how much more will prices drop? The deacceleration has already started happening in August in 416 proper. It's still going in the 905 as the 905 are mainly detaches. My gut feeling honestly tells me we'll continue seeing a decrease in prices at like 1 to 2% per month in the 905 and probably a slight decrease in Toronto proper a few months after 2018 before the stress test. And then at that point, maybe in the spring of 2018, we'll start seeing prices increase. I don't know. That's just a guess. I don't have a crystal ball, right? The other two factors we'll look at is this new listings and absorption rate. What really surprised me is that the amount of new listings that came to market this past month of November is absolutely outrageous compared to this year, this time last year. We were actually experiencing some declines in listings and increase in sales from August to September, giving us a lot of hope that the market was rebounding, but then BAM! A ton of listings came out last month. This is likely due to the fact that a lot of sellers are trying to take advantage of the stress test being implemented in January 1st of 2018. This is exactly why we'll continue seeing a slowdown in the market until maybe spring because we just got so much more supply. So buyers, if you're not affected by the stress test, I would chill for a bit and wait till the scramble ends at the end of 2017. If you are affected by the stress test, you could be permanently priced out of the market and sorry to hear that, okay? If you guys learned something in this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed watching this video, subscribe to the Prime Prop Steel right here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And make sure you guys subscribe to the Prime Prop Steel VIP mailing list for weekly insights and investment opportunities. And remember, please share this with family and friends. Until next time, happy real estate. Because like I say, it's an invest.